Hey guys, um, I'm on the way in St. Louis. Uh, I got to see uh, one of my brothers graduate from high school, uh, so I won't be able to make it to class, but I'm very thankful that I'm able to make a video and share um, three of my favorite books with you guys. Um, so the first one I wanted to share with you guys is called The Children of Men by P.D. James. So I want you to think with me, what if the human race could no longer have babies? What if we lived in a world where there were no more children? It was just people 30 and above. Um, well, in the children of men, we enter into a world where in 1995, the last human baby was born and the entire race became infertile, um, a phenomenon which they call the, the Omega. So with little or no hope, left for a future, the world falls into chaos and disarray. The setting is England, 2021, where a man named Zahn uh, governs as the warden, and he tries to maintain some sort of structure and control over the nation. Um, and the way that he does that is he implements um, some new policies uh, the government runs suicide ceremonies for the elderly and disabled so that they don't burden the rest of the aging population that remains. They also Im import young people from poor countries to come and work for them. Um, they are not treated well at all, and they're deported once they turn 60 because they're not wanted anymore. Uh, kind of like indentured servants. And they also, any anyone who commits a crime is sent to a remote island where they have no hope of ever coming back. Um, so the book begins in the diary of a man named Theodore Farron. He's a history professor at Oxford University. And he lives in a, a reserved, solitary life after having uh, run over his 15-month-old uh, daughter, uh, which thereby ended his marriage with his wife. Um, he tells, um, starting out, of his encounter uh, with a group of people, um, some rebels, that are not happy with the government, not happy with this dictator, Zahn. And they call themselves the Five Fishes. Um, and they find out that Theodore is actually Zahn's cousin. And so they seek him out and ask him to go uh, present their demands peacefully to Zahn. Um, and after Theodore actually witnesses one of these mass uh, suicide ceremonies, finding out that it's actually forced suicide for some people, um, or they get drugged um, so that they're more willing to, to commit suicide, um, he accepts the offer to go present these demands to Zahn. Unfortunately, uh, Zahn declines and... Um, the rebels begin a systematic destruction of all of the landings where they used, that they used for the mass suicide um, ceremonies. And so during this time, Theo wrestles with these feelings of reluctance with having joined this group instead of having just stayed in his living his quiet life to the end of his life. Um, he is also wrestling with the feelings of loneliness, though. Um, and, and is drawn really to this the woman who's the leader of this group. Um, and so uh, as that's happening, one of their members of the five members is arrested. And so it begins this crazy flight from London and the warden and his secret police um, just fighting for their lives to, to run away and escape um, and to complicate matters. This is the crazy part. Julian, this leader um, of this group, finds out that she's pregnant and uh, with the world's first child in over 25 years. Will they escape? Will they fall into the hands of the dictator? What will happen to this child, the hope of the human race? Um, you'll have to find out and read. Um, so let me, I'm going to go ahead and read the uh, first uh, a couple paragraphs um, in, in Theodore's diary. Early this morning, 
the 1st of January, 2021, three minutes after midnight, the last human being to be born on Earth was killed in a pub, a brawl in the suburb of Buenos Aires, aged 25 years, 2 months, and 12 days. If the first reports are to be believed, Joseph Ricardo died as he had lived. The distinction, if one can call it that, of being the last human whose birth was officially recorded, unrelated as it was to any personal virtue or tra talent, he always had been, it had always been difficult for him to handle. And now he's dead. The news was given to us here in Britain on the nine o'clock program, the state radio service, and I heard it fortuitously. I had settled down to begin this diary for the last half of my life when I noticed the time and thought I might as well catch the headlines to the nine o'clock bulletin. Ricardo's death was the last item mentioned, and then only briefly a couple of sentences delivered without emphasis in the newscaster's carefully non-committal voice. But it seemed to me, hearing it, that it was a small additional justification for being, getting this diary today, the first day of a new year and my 50th birthday. As a child, I had always liked that distinction, despite the inconvenience of having it follow Christmas too quickly, so that one present, it never seemed notably superior to the one I would in any case have received, had to do for both celebrations. As I begin writing, the three events, the new year, my 50th birthday, Ricardo's death, hardly justify sullying the first pages of this new loose-leaf notebook, but I shall continue one small additional defense against personal sloth. If there is nothing to record, I shall record the nothingness, and then, if and when I reach old age, as most of us can expect to, we have become experts at prolonging life, I shall open one of my tins of hoarded matches and light my small personal bonfire of vanities. I have no intention of leaving the diary as a record of one man's last years. Even in my most egotistical moods, I am not as self-deceiving as that. What possible interest can there be in the journal of Theodore Farron, doctor of his philosophy, fellow of Merton College in the University of Oxford, historian of the Victorian age, divorced, childless, solitary, whose only claim to notice is that he is cousin to Zan Lipiat, the director, the dictator and warden of England. 